Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another speed build. Today we're going to take a little left <laughs> from all of our spooky day builds and our builds anticipating the new life and death expansion pack. We're going to visit Sulani at the Caldera Camp lot specifically because it's right at the base of a volcano. You'll see I've already started doing a lot of terrain manipulation and placement of live edit plants. Did use a lot of tool mod and a lot of uh, finagling basically just to get everything where I needed it to be. And while I was doing the terrain manipulation and the placement of the platforms, I was recording. However, you know how, how technology is. I had encountered an error while recording, was not aware of such things until the end when I went to stop the recording and noticed that it had a pop-up that said there was an error with your recording and that was it. It was just lost. It was gone. So instead of a boarding mission and just scrapping it, starting over, recording it again, I decided to just start right here with my recording instead. <laughs> so you'll see I still had a lot left to do as far as placing more of these debug rocks and using all the tool mod skills that I have acquired <laughs> over the years. I decided to grab a bunch of these from island living specifically because they really really match the rest of the world and they are very like volcanic rock looking they're very dark they have some moss on them so they kind of match the forest off to the left of this lot if you're looking at it from this position and then i added a bunch of other plants so lots of low-lying grass lots of flowering trees and bushes and then these little itty bitty rocks which i thought were so fun they're just like these little tiny boulders i don't know where they came from i don't know what they're supposed to be part of but they were in the island living debug menu so grabbed a lot of those and also some of these very nice kind of cliff pieces and just threw them all around tried to work them into the landscape a little bit into the hillside so that it wasn't all just sand and dark dirt but I think that it came out pretty nice and also the little building that is on the ground level is actually a communal bathroom so it has some shower stalls and some toilet stalls and some sinks that's the only bathroom on this lot. Everybody will just have to share it. But all of these homes have one bedroom in the upstairs area, a tiny kitchenette space, and then this little <laughs> this little odd rectangle up here at the very, very top, I actually end up expanding and making a little bit bigger so it can accommodate um, a lot more room, a lot bigger of a kitchen, more of a dining space, more of a living room space than the other ones. So that's kind of like the master suite of this vacation rental. I think if you were to come here with a family of Sims, up to like five Sims, I believe is the math I got, then you would be able to have everyone have their own little tiny house, their own little kitchenette, just share the bathroom and they can explore the island together on vacation. I thought that would be a fun idea. I was actually thinking about making this into a regular rental residential, but then I thought that it would be a little weird because the builds are so small. They're like micro home size. And I didn't think that the tenants would love the amenities that were provided uh, for long and you would have lots of problems with your tenants like revolting or whatever. It would just be a nightmare, I think, to have these as residential rentals. However, if you download this off the gallery, you are more than welcome to do whatever you want with it. So if you wanted to try your hand at making it a residential rental lot, you totally could. I just didn't know if that would be the best option for me. I feel like I would get really annoyed after a while, so I kind of gave up on that idea. But you'll see here I'm just using more of this tool mod trick to kind of get all of these little rock pieces, these little ledges together, and I work them underneath the berm basically so it looks like they are making up the entire berm. It's not just sand. I really tried to make it look like this whole hill was more of a volcanic rock deposit, like there had been an eruption at some point and it left this large hill, and from there they decided to build these tiny little homes on, which I don't know uh, if that's 100% up to code, but you know what? That's the sims so we just roll with it i just thought it was really fun and also there is a lot of rock on the left side of this build or the right side depending on which side you're looking at it and it kind of works its way into the rainforest so what i did was i took some really big rocks and i used tool mod to move the rocks off of the lot to kind of connect with the rest of the rainforest that way it all looks like one big cohesive hill and that these aren't just you know huge hills in the middle of nowhere land so <laughs> you'll see here i'm finally starting to put up the walls on our first little tiny rental unit here it does have a teeny tiny little front porch with this lovely screen door from island living and there's also a ladder to go up to the second floor so there is a little overhang over where the front door is 
I thought that would be essential because it does rain in Sulani and they do have a lot of thunderstorms. So having a little bit of covered area to protect from the rain and the thunderstorms I thought was essential. And then I use my very favorite siding here from Island Living in this lovely blue color. I think what I did was this home ends up being blue. There's another one that ends up being yellow. And then the very top one is like an orange. I just thought having really colorful homes on top of this hill would be really, really fun. A nice little break from all of the greens and the browns and blacks. And then these white flowers everywhere would really kind of contrast that. So I did place lots of these white flowers everywhere. I tried to cover up a lot of the gaps that were formed from the rocks and the terrain manipulation, like the little holes in the terrain manipulation before you get to where the steps are and the little platforms of ground. And then over here where the bathroom is, I put up some stairs and another big sliding door from Island Living and the white siding instead because I thought that was just, this is just a bathroom. It doesn't have to be super fancy. But this is where I decided pretty much what the shape of all of their roofs were going to be. I just did a double gable roof here and I kind of worked them into each other and gave them a nice thatch roofing pattern with the roof trim as well and then I changed the the shade of the roof to be more of a darker shade because I thought it made more sense being up here near the volcano it wouldn't be like some stark bright palm it would be a little bit darker and then in here is the bathroom it's a little dark right now so it's hard to see but we have two bathroom stalls and I worked in two of these open air island living windows behind the bathroom stalls as well as the horse ranch shower stalls and then we're finally adding some light to this other building here so that I could finish it up when I came back I think I did this in like four sessions four building sessions it took me quite a bit of time I just wanted to make sure I got all of the details correct and I love that roof shape so I'm really happy with that and then here is the second home you'll see the little front porch is on the opposite side I just thought it would be nice to kind of break up a little bit it does have a very similar shape although the upper deck space ends up being a little bit of a different shape and it's more facing the back of the lot versus the front so I did kind of try to change up the shape of this home a little bit I didn't want them all to be exactly the same I wanted them to have their own little unique shape about them same roof though because I really do like that roof I think it fits perfectly with the island that one ends up being yellow and then this home back here does end up getting bigger of course it deleted my platform which was really annoying and don't worry I do end up using the terrain manipulation to fix that spot where it's just like poking out there with the uh, the stilted foundation I thought that didn't make any sense I did not like that so I did fix that in the end this one is definitely the master suite because it has a much larger footprint than the other buildings do. And then I decided to actually extend this upper deck on the blue home as well, because I thought they should all have a good amount of space on the outside upper deck to look out over the island and to take, get a look at the volcano. I thought that was essential. If you're here on vacation, you want to be able to sit out on your deck and see everything. Here I am fixing the terrain right there, so it wasn't quite so stark of a difference. Then adding more of these Alive Edit rock pieces and cliff pieces and just burying them down into the ground. And I did play test all of these buildings with my sim and she could get around all of the homes easily. I only had to rearrange the living room of the yellow house a little bit because I didn't realize that one of the live edit plants, the footprint was registering inside the home. So I did have to mess around with that a little, but it did end up working out just fine. It pretty much looks exactly the same. And then I added some of these large palm trees out here also to kind of blend in with the rest of the forest surrounding it. There's a lovely rainforest and I didn't want to take away from that. Also a lot of this low-lying grass here. I took a lot of that and placed it over here off lot as well using tool mod. It is quite useful if you're ever building something like this and you want to decorate off lot. That's pretty much what tool stands for is to take objects off lot. <laughs> so it's very, very nice. It came in very handy. Also, this tree right here in front of us is called a breadfruit tree in the live edit menu. So I thought that was a nice touch too. It's just a little different. It's very green. It's not so flowery. And all of these big leafy plants as well, I thought being over here made more sense. And then some more white flowers just to tie it all together and blend it in really nicely. Now you can't add terrain paint over here. So that is kind of a bummer because it is off lot. But I figured adding a lot of this tall grass would kind of hide the fact that the lot is has ended already and just kind of blend it in with the rest of the surroundings. I thought it was a nice little touch. And then over here we have more plants up top there. I added so many of these white flowering bushes and so many of these little cliff pieces. So I'm only showing you a few of them, but it definitely took a lot of time 
to really get everything in the right place and I didn't want it obstructing your sim's ability to get inside of the builds. So that took a while, but we are finally going to be furnishing now. So we have the blue home. They are getting the snowy escape countertop with the shelves and then these lovely open windows from Island Living as well. We have a tiny one on the side, also this slatted one in the front, and then this big open one in the back that looks out at the staircase to the next home. And there's just a very tiny little TV space in here. It's just a tiny little rat and chair with a blue cushion to match the rest of the house. And then this little tiny TV on a console table. And I believe what I did was I changed the swatch of this countertop and then I decided I wanted to add the flooring to the rest of the homes and also the wallpaper. I wanted everything to pretty much be the same as far as the flooring and as far as the wallpaper was concerned. And I also wanted to add these lovely corbels to hold up the deck because I thought it, they, it just kind of looked funny that it was just floating there, but I didn't want to add a lot of columns because it just didn't seem to make sense. And I wanted your Sims to be able to get around this little space here on the side of this blue house to get to the stairs that lead up to the yellow house. And if I put columns here, then your Sim wouldn't be able to walk through them. So that is why I did that. I also had to move some of these plants and some of these rocks out a little bit farther that you see right here because the sim couldn't walk past there anyway so that took a little bit of fiddling but it does work now your sim can walk up to the blue house go around the blue house walk up to the yellow one and then follow the stairs up to the orange house and i think it looks really really pretty all of these plants here on the side of this little blue house i thought were so fun like they were just built into the landscape i just love it so much and then we have some of the island living upper head cabinet pieces that are <laughs> that are really, really funny shaped. So I did fit them together kind of like a puzzle and I think they look really nice. Also some of these lovely photographs that you can get if you go scuba diving in Sulani. I thought they were pretty to add on the wall there. And a little vase and a little plant and also a rug from Island Living. And the light that I add is also from Island Living. It's just this tiny one here, but I do size it down a little because it was just slightly too bulbous in my opinion. And then I added this little plate of leaves. I assume that's like some kind of herbs. And then I put it on top of the microwave and the mini fridge. The mini fridge is from For Rent. And then the microwave is base game. And we have some dishes down here from Everyday Clutter, Snowy Escape, and Horse Ranch. And then up here, I decided to place this cute little axolotl right up here with the tool mod. Just kind of made sure he was sitting ever so slightly it's so cute. I love it so much. I just thought that the colors matched really nicely with the rest of the aesthetic of the home. And then I added this other big vining kind of curtain thing on the outside because I thought it would be nice to hide that window a little bit, but still give the effect, you know, of the open air window. And then up here on their upper deck, they have one little lounge chair with a light next to it. That is it for now, but I think I end up adding a little dining table up there as well. In the bedroom, we have this single bed from Island Living and a little table lamp from Island Living as well as this dresser. And then for the mirror, I believe I picked out the one that came with movie hangout stuff. I really liked all the colors, but I did end up just picking the very plain kind of wooden one and a little flower bouquet and a little selection of perfumes right here and also some jewelry on top of the dresser. I thought it was really nice. And also this little selection of like clay jars. I don't know why, but they look so pretty. So I just put them right there. I don't know. Nice little touch. I was trying to keep the rooms not super decorated because in my head this is an island rental but I still wanted it to look like someone has been staying here or someone is staying here currently. I could have probably put some suitcases in here just for the added effect but I didn't do that yet because I hadn't quite decided if it was going to be a residential rental or a vacation rental. And also, if your Sims come here and you want to place their suitcase like they're staying on vacation, you totally can if you have it in their inventory. Out here is our little table from Little Camper's Kit and the chairs from Laundry Day for their little dining table up top here. And of course, these hanging lights from Island Living as well. I do end up getting rid of the shade that covers that large window in the front, by the way. It was just a little, eh, it was like cutting into the roof. It didn't quite look right. So instead, I just added some of these slats from Snowy Escape. And on it, I added some more plants and used tool mod to just raise it up just so. Give it a little bit of decoration on that side since there's no window on that side of the house. I thought it would be nice to give it something else instead. Now we are in the yellow house though. And I went with the dream home decorator counter and also the little countertop oven. I do end up changing that out for the regular oven because if you take up all the countertop space, they have nowhere to prep. And what happens is they end up going to another one of the houses to do their food prep. 
and I just thought that was a little silly. So I did get rid of the countertop oven and instead went with the regular oven that goes in the counter itself. But I still think it's a really, really cute home. I use the same open air windows from the bathroom, only these have that yellow swatch around the frame of the window to match the outside of the home. Also some Island Living curtains and also an Island Living easy chair right there. And they do have a little tiny sink to wash dishes and then a little plant right here in the corner. And I also added the Island Living trash can, the outdoor trash can outside all of the builds so that everybody would have a place to put their trash. Each house has their own trash can. Now we're gonna be in the upstairs of the yellow unit. This one does have a double bed. So if two Sims are staying in here, it will involve scooting, which I know can be really obnoxious sometimes, but if you have trouble with that, there is a way to center the bed at least a little bit so your Sims can get back in there. But they have a nice simple dresser, nice little bedroom for now. And I also added some roof decorations outside just to give the outside of the home a little bit of uh, charm, I guess you'd say. In here, we have a mixture of island living curtains and also the Bloomin' Room vining curtains just to add a little bit more greenery on the inside. And then I have a dream home decorator painting and also this shelf from Snowy Escape underneath it. I was actually thinking about putting a wall mounted TV, but I thought that that wasn't necessary because there's a TV downstairs. So I placed a little shelf here with some plants and some little knickknacks. We have a little backrest pillow on the floor, a little tray with some books and some candles. Maybe the Sim prefers to sit in bed and read and not so much watch TV and some more plants just because with that little dresser that has the uh, nightlight on it. And then we are in the largest unit, the orange unit. We have the jungle adventure countertops in this white and blue tone and then i used the stove i believe is also from jungle adventure and then the fridge is from country kitchen kit because i really like how that matches with the aesthetic of the counters and we also added a nice range hood we added some overhead cabinets in this one as well and i thought having a pantry cabinet in this unit would be really nice these are from dream home decorator by the way I thought they would be really nice to have because a lot of the other ones do not have a lot of overhead cabinet space. And I imagine that this would be like where the parents would stay. Say you came with some of your children, your Sims children. This would be where the parents would stay because it is the largest and most accommodating. Maybe this is where everybody hangs out when they're not doing their own thing around the island. So maybe they have some teens or some children and they stay in their own little homes. And this is where mom and dad stay because <laughs> they trust their kids apparently in their own little house, which is, you know, know hey that's got to be nice and then we have their upstairs space again this dresser I really like this dresser I just move it over to the side a little I didn't want to block the door too much and then I also use the mirror from for rent I thought that was really pretty and some plants in here we got a nice little bromeliad on this side and then on the walls I use this lovely wall decoration from for rent that elephant and there's a little light on the dresser and then over here we use these green curtains again on the windows because I thought they were so pretty and they also match the bedspread pretty nicely so I wanted to keep those and this book nook rug I just double it up a little bit so it looks a little bit longer and I thought it looked so nice and more of these photos because I thought that we needed more of these throughout all of the homes just to kind of keep it cohesive and then another one of these little like totem guys out front because it's fun and they also end up having some lounge chairs on their front deck as well now we're in the bathroom really quick we have some sinks from For Rent because I love the little basin with the flower tile in the middle. And then the mirror is from Outdoor Retreat. I thought it was really fun because it looks handmade. And I think that this place is very rustic in its own right. It's pretty spectacular, but it's, it's a little rustic. You know what I mean? It's kind of at the base of a volcano. So, you know, stay at your own risk kind of thing. And then we have the toilet stalls from high school years because I thought those were like the nicest looking but they also had a little bit of wood accent on them so they made the most sense we have a ceiling light from snowy escape because I like the kind of light that it shines in here it's very soft and then out here we have a little fake laundry space a little fish hanging rack over here and some mailboxes that I'm going to add on this side I don't know if when you were staying here you'd use these mailboxes but it's nice to have the option if they want to send a postcard to their relatives they have somewhere to put it so the mail can be <laughs> delivered and taken away and then a lot of these torch lights I place these all over the lot. This is the last thing I end up placing because I thought that we needed a little bit of light. And then in the screenshots, you will see all of the rest of the decorations I ended up putting in all the homes because I went back a few times 
to finish up the decorations. But here we have our volcanic hillside rentals. I have it labeled as a three bed, one bath because it has one communal bathroom and it is on the 30 by 20 caldera camp lot in Sulani and it is super affordable. So I really hope that you enjoyed watching this build. I know it's a little break from all the other content you're probably seeing with the new life and death early access and all of the Halloween builds and the spooky builds. I just thought it would be fun to do something a little bit different, something that popped into my head that I was like, you know, it'd be really cool. Some volcanic hillside rentals. I don't know. It makes sense. It just popped in my head. So I hope that you enjoyed it too. It is up on the gallery now under my gallery ID, Miss Chris Builds. And I really look forward to seeing the rest of the early access content. I hope that you guys stay tuned because as soon as I get my hands on that pack, I will also be building cemeteries and spooky lots and haunted lots, hallowed grounds lots. I'm so excited. So thanks again for joining me here today. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you have not already. I look forward to hearing from you and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.